Um, so look, listen, we've obviously had an interesting develop here, development here today. This has been going on for actually weeks at a time, which is um, the collapse of the oil market. And I just wanted to, to, to leave you with a few words regarding that. So my phone has been blowing up all day from people in the industry calling me to get my take on the oil. Um, everyone from friends to some, some people that I know who are oil oil traders, their oil futures traders, um, to certain news outlets, and it's um, it's not surprising that everyone's sort of looking for some stable ground here. Everyone is thrown, everyone is confused, and they don't know whether or not this is good or bad or indifferent. And one of the most common questions I've gotten today is, is it time to really take a low risk bet on oil? Is it time to just buy? Um, and that's the number one question, obviously, I'm getting. But um, my initial take is that no, at this particular moment, I don't think oil is a buy. Yes, it's down to 20 year lows. I don't think we've been here since 1999 in terms of price. I know I know President Clinton was back in office in the United States when oil was this depressed before. So we're dealing with a, with 20 year old low prices, but still at these prices, I don't feel confident that oil is a buy as of yet. So um, that's that. If I'm trying to understand what positive effects this really has. So I'll give you my thoughts regarding that because just because oil, I'm all at, okay, this market is bad, but what is good because this market is bad? So my mind goes there. It does not usually go to is going into what's bad good right now. That's usually a novice mindset, all right? The more professional mindset is, this is going down, so what goes up? Not to invest in what goes down, but to invest in what goes up because this item is down like a seesaw. That's the more professional approach. Let's break this down clearly, as clearly as we possibly can. Obviously, if you are in the business of producing oil, if you're a producer, this is not good, right? Which means that you just have to produce more to make the same amount of money. On top of that, the world is going through an economic, uh, a, a major economic depression, and oil is collapsing, which makes the producers have to produce more oil which floods the market with more supply, which further crashes the prices. So if they want to keep taking in the same amount, they've got to dump more. By dumping more, you collapse the price more. So it becomes this vicious cycle. So if you're a producer, you're having a really, really bad time now. Now, if you're a consumer of oil, you buy oil, you buy oil, protect that oil from price volatility through oil futures, and you need oil to do transport, to ship, to send, to fly airplanes. Anyone who's a consumer of oil, like airlines and ship liners, and virtually anyone who does export, import throughout the world, you are in freaking heaven right now because oil prices are collapsing. So, how does a company who's not even using the oil now because of the epidemic we're dealing with but wants to lock the price in now at this low price? They do it through futures. So they get they buy a bunch of futures for to lock in the current price now through the oil futures market 
and they're guaranteed oil delivery at that price throughout the contract of that futures contract. So obvious businesses who are doing that right now, airlines, so that when airlines get their bailout from governments and go back online, they have a double benefit. They're getting governmental bailout, all right? Airlines, countries cannot let their airlines go out of business. They're almost, they're too essential for a company, country to let fail. I was going to say that they're too big to fail. No, they're not too big to fail. They're too essential to fail. So countries don't want all of their, they'll let some of them, but they won't let the whole airline industry in a country So countries are going to get, and let's think of America. America's going to bail out and financially help its airliners. In addition to that, they are now freaking locking in the lowest oil prices, gas prices, in 20 years. So now, just looking at that industry, we know we have to be there. You understand? For the future, we have to have a couple of airline stocks in our arsenal because of this double benefit they now have. Now, you know, I've, all, I've already had you focused on the cruise liners, Carnival Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean. I've, always, I've already had you focused on them because they stand to benefit from the economic turnaround in a big way. And they were hurt more than other businesses because they became the poster boy of the, the, the novel coronavirus thing with everyone trapped on the ships and stuff like that. So I think their rebound is going to be just as violent, if not more violent, than the airlines because they've been depressed just as much and in some cases more than the airlines. So these are two key industries, cruise liners, airliners, that are going to get get a huge benefit from their number one expense collapsing.